On your mark, get set. We're riding on the internet, cyberspace, set free. Hello, virtual reality. Interactive appetite, searching for a website, a window to the world, got to get online. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. It is hard to imagine a world without the web, especially for millennials. We've never truly known a world without it. Now that I've gotten on the internet, I'd rather be on my computer than doing just about anything. It's really cool. The internet gave us a whole world of exciting new possibilities. So I guess this is a story of how it changed our lives. Maybe it will yours too. As of December 2018, there are approximately 2 billion websites in the world. The World Wide Web was created by Tim Berners-Lee in 1989, and it created a means of navigating online material via hypertext links. Following the popularization of the World Wide Web, questions of race, sex, age, income, and geographical location arose. During the early days of the internet, some scholars theorized that the emergence of virtual environments and a culture of fantasy would mean an escape from the boundaries of race and the experience of racism. A rise in identity tourism emerged, that is, people using the playful possibilities of the internet and anonymity to visit different racial and gender identities online. Many people believed the internet would help fight racism due to the international connection. Yet, the reality that emerged is quite different from the initial imagining. The internet has not provided an escape route from either race or racism. Instead, race and racism persist online in ways that are both new and unique to the internet, as well as in similar ways that it manifests offline. Anonymity on the internet has created a stomping ground for hate. Early definitions of cyberspace really saw the web as an alternate place where we shed the materiality of our bodies and we could try on other identities and other ways of being. Early online communities had very open-ended parameters for how you created your identity, and identity play was a form of self-discovery. Today, identities are ready-made, often tied to authentication, often part of a wider culture of profiling. Yet, we still crave anonymity. Having some form of anonymity online offers many people a kind of freedom, whether it's used for exposing corruption, like in an author authoritarian government who censors the internet, or just experimenting socially online, it provides a way for the content but not the author to be seen. This also gives us the unbridled ability to say offensive things to wide general audiences, often without consequences. There's no archive, uh, there are no barriers, there, there's no registration. These things that we're, we're used to with, with forums don't exist on 4chan. And that, that's led to this discussion that's completely raw, completely unfiltered. Um, and what the site's known for, because, because it has this environment, is it's fostered the creation of a lot of internet phenomena, viral videos and whatnot. Beneath digital news stories and social media posts are unmoderated, often anonymous comment streams showing in plain view the anger, condescension, misogyny, xenophobia, and racism simmering within the citizenry. Took actual comments from YouTube and Twitter, oh. and I just want to hear what it would sound like if people read them to, out loud to each other. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> A country that is all white is all right. <laughs> Ultimately, the internet's biggest appeal of anonymity is also its biggest weakness. What really matters here are the issues. What really matters here is the kind of government we want, the kind of internet we want, the kind of relationship between people and societies. And that's what I'm hoping the debate will move towards, and we've seen that increasing over time. I don't believe that someone needs to identify themselves in order to use the Internet. And for the reasons that you've described, there are uh, times when anonymity is really important. Mm -hmm. We all understand that anonymity can sometimes be abused. Someone will say things in an anonymous way that can be very harmful. You don't know where they came from. You can't defend yourself. The closest you can come to defending yourself is to say, well, that isn't true, but then that sounds very defensive. Racism and sexism are part of the bargain we make in exchange for a free and less moderated form of media. The internet and comment sections as we know it are an environment where racism is very easily bred due to anonymity. The only way to reduce this type of language on the internet would be to control it through filtering or requiring the use and authentication of real identities. But no one wants that. Thus, this issue is predicted to persist. 